Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Melbourne's coronavirus cluster hotspots, coupled with rising cases in the US southern states, has seen the media whipping up fears about a second wave. I know when I hear the media and politicians talk about a second wave, I don't fear deaths from the coronavirus or our hospitals being overwhelmed. I fear the continued erosion of our civil liberties and our second house arrest. The societal effects of the lockdown and house arrest on people's mental and physical health on families and those living alone have been completely disregarded throughout this pandemic. The economic devastation from the coronavirus lockdowns has only just begun. In Australia this past week, we saw two of our major iconic companies, Qantas and Woolworths, announcing massive job redundancies. And there's been a lot of smaller uh, brands and companies announcing layoffs as well. In the, in the month of May, 227,000 jobs were lost in Australia, long-term unemployment is another contributing factor to mental health issues in individuals. This effect of the coronavirus shutdown has not garnered the attention that it should. The state of Victoria finds itself in the epicentre of the so-called second wave, despite Premier General Andrews in implementing the harshest lockdowns and most punitive measures in Australia. Therefore, it is not surprising that Victoria has become the epicentre of the anti-lockdown pro-freedom activism that has sprung up uh, online and out into the streets. We've profiled many individuals who are part of Melbourne's new freedom movement. So on the return of Monday night's Wilmsfront, I'd like to introduce uh, James uh, Bartolo uh, from the Conscious <laughs> Truth Network. James, welcome to the show. Bartolo. I knew I'd mess Tim. it Good up. to be on the show. <laughs> Now, your channel, the, the Conscious Truth Network, it's both a, a YouTube channel, a Facebook page, you've also got a Facebook group. Uh, you mm -hmm. launched it with a, a video vlog uh, from the, the, the May 10th uh, Mother's Day anti-lockdown revolt, as I call it, outside uh, Victoria's Parliament House. So why mm -hmm. did you decide to attend and what was your reaction to well, Victoria's police aggressive shutdown of the protest? So why I decided to attend was I've always been very interested in researching the truth of this world and discovering the many hidden secrets that the powers that shouldn't be have covered with lies everywhere. And at first with this whole coronavirus pandemic, I, I wasn't I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't know exactly what was going on. And then after a couple of weeks, I started looking into it more and started to discover even more lies and, well, discover the lies and peel back the truth underneath it. And I thought, mm, okay, I can see this is starting to come into their end game. This is what the past thousands of years have been building up to. And it's now or never. I always knew this was something I would have to do uh, to, to do my part for humanity. I just didn't want it to be this early. So I saw those uh, that protest and I thought, hey, what the hell, I'm going to go along and do some interviews. I was thinking about starting up some kind of channel like what I've done right now, but I wasn't sure exactly how to do it. And uh, when you're under pressure, yeah, you got to come up with something. So I went to the, the protest there and started interviewing people and saw exactly what everyone else was saying all the other people the, the leading experts in conspiracy theories or really the truth had been saying that th this is the cabal's last push this is the cabal's last push and they're going to start acting crazy crazy because the, the actions of the police that day were absolutely despicable absolutely despicable like gr running up behind craig he had no idea craig what was cole. going on yeah craig cole picking him up you know cutting him in the forehead grabbing thanos uh you know attacking some poor man that was standing on the other side of the protest who wasn't even attending the protest he had i believe two like babies in a pram 
and they've just grabbed him, thrown him on the ground, manhandled him, and it was disgusting. And then myself walking down the street, uh, you know, they've grabbed me with no lawful reason whatsoever. And, you know, that that was terrible. So that's what got me started into all this. And I thought after that, yeah, enough's enough. Let, let's launch this channel. Let's learn all about video editing and setting up the Facebook groups and all that kind of jazz and get the message out there to as many people as possible to to wake up people and to show the people who are already wake that we need to unify mm. because uh, to remind uh, everyone uh, victorians were banned uh, from seeing their mothers on mother's day the the house arrest uh, which it properly should be called was in place <coughs> I, I remember on may the 8th uh, there was the the national cabinet meeting where scott morrison unveiled the 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 three-step framework he called it for a covid safe australia and i remember after he announced that daniel andrews came out and said whoa hang on no nothing changes today uh we're, we're going to wait until the state of emergency uh expires on monday and or if you do anything on the on the weekend that i don't approve of then victoria police will be out enforcing it and he was he, he it was at the height of his uh power trip uh at that time and uh, the the polls had his uh, appro approval rating soaring and the, this i never forget uh, th these th these type of uh events uh, i know with the 24-hour media cycle it just goes to the back of people's minds but we should never forget that how how much he treated us like children and threatened us uh, victoria had the most punitive lockdown measures in the in the states and so it's not surprising there it's still despicable that uh, uh victoria police well were on their own power trip that day and as i said at the time they breached social distancing to to, to manhandle yourself uh, craig cole from no consent and uh fanos from the the 99 uh, percent group mm -hmm. and i remember on the the mainstream media that night the like violence at the at the the anti-lockdown uh protest or, or or chaos and that's obviously the uh, the hint or what they were trying to tell their audience was it was because of these uh, conspiracy uh, people but as you can see there were smartphones all around that day camera phones filming victoria police were the aggressor mm -hmm. and so you mentioned that you were uh, manhandled by uh, Victoria uh, police. Did you have any interaction with them that day? Did they try to question you? Ah, so what happened? I saw how they were treating that father who had the kids in the pram, and I went over <clears throat> and I filmed it as well. And I was yelling at them, just asking them, "What are you doing? Like, are you doing the right thing? Look in your hearts. Like, is this what you signed up for?" And there was not many cops there who I'm quite empathetic and you can see in people's eyes when they know they're doing the right thing there was a woman a police officer there who who was looking like holy shit like I know this is not the right thing but most of the cops there were loving it they just love causing terror especially the the ones with higher command like you can just smell the freemasonry coming off them and you know they just when I was over there at first the threatening oh you'll be arrested next you'll be arrested i'm like yeah sure that'll be false arrest and i'll sue you civilly and they don't like it when you tell them that and then uh myself and my friend Lockie, who was filming me that day we we just started walking down the street away from them and we were doing an interview while we were walking with another man that we just saw there and as lucky was filming the man who was speaking the cops were walking after me and he just kept saying move on move on blah 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 and I said, yeah, sure I am, but like, you've got no authority. You don't actually have any authority. Wh where is your purported authority coming from? It's like, oh, this act and this act, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, can you prove that it's been lawfully enacted? Like, where's the certificate of proclamation? Where's the publication of the Gazette? Where's the royal assent? Oh, no, it's totally illegal. 
illegal and unlawful. But the thing is, I was still walking down the street away from him and, you know, he, he had enough of me, you know, schooling him in the, the world of law and he just grabbed me and decided that I'll jump on me and unlawfully arrest me. And as that was happening, I was like, oh, what, like, whatever, okay, you know, arrest me. But I was still holding my mic at the time. And one cop was trying to put put my arm around my back here and another cop was putting my arm around my back here. And I'm just like, like come on, they, these guys obviously don't go to the gym. <laughs> like, what are they doing? Because I didn't want to put my arm behind my back still holding the mic. So I was like, no, no, no. Like, I've got to put this in my pocket. He's like, no, I'll give it to your friend. So another cop came over and he, he I gave it to him and, he, and then he gave it to Lockie. And then as I was like, okay, whatever, I'm just going to comply, like, because they've got guns, there's lots of them, and they're dangerous, they're dangerous people, I'll just comply, put my arms behind my back and let them cuff me, and as I was doing that, another one comes in the front and sticks his forearm in my throat, he's like, you better do what you're told, otherwise you're going to get hurt, and I'm like, whoa, dude, I'm complying, what the hell, they're just psychopaths, absolute psychopaths, they get a thrill out of you know, harming and hurting innocent people who are defenseless with no weapons and when they outnumber them. So you could Literal have been psychopaths. George Floyd uh, that day, potentially, if they're using mm. that type of brute force on you. Ah, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting people. Though there was one cop there who I could, yeah, who, who did have humanity. Like, I could tell he was a good cop, just, well, you know, he, he was a better man than the others because they've, they've walked me over to the van that was there and then put me in there. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm just going to sue you all for false arrest if you keep on taking this further. And then the good cop was like talking to me as I was like, as if I was a human, which was nice. And then he just got some details and then I just kept saying the same thing and they let me go literally two, two minutes after that. So I was like, okay, whatever, whatever. And that was the first major revolt uh, against the, the, the lockdown and house arrest in uh, Victoria. The, uh, the people of the state had been largely, or should I say sheeple, had been largely compliant uh, with the, uh, the house arrest. You were only allowed to, to, to leave the house for four essential reasons, which... Uh, was uh, to get uh, food or, or or medicine or to to provide care uh, or for exercise or for uh, essential work and we should also remember i'm not sure if you remember uh, that dan andrews tried to get away with uh, it was known as a, a bonking ban that if you didn't live uh with your partner you weren't allowed to to visit them that was not considered uh essential you might kill somebody uh on on the way that lasted six hours after rightful outrage and mm -hmm. uh, you probably remember all this uh easter uh long weekend victoria police just pulling people over asking what's your business being out and mm -hmm. if the the response of most people should have been none of your business that's mm -hmm. how it is normally Mm -hmm. absolutely it's just this totalitarian tiptoe like I, I don't understand how some people still think that's okay to to be harassed by these people with weapons when you just walk down the street like what are you doing where's your papers like what kind of world do we live in is this meant to be a free world or, well it, it's not but on the illusion is that it is meant to be but clearly not mm. Continue. So I think with that they were definitely freaked out by uh, the Mother's Day anti-lockdown protest. And if they thought that that was going to intimidate you, uh, Thanos, uh, another uh, anti-lockdown activist I've interviewed, so have, so have you, is uh, Rafael uh, Fernandez. All it did was was hard, harden you all and see a, a spike in interest uh, in uh, uh, the, these activists, the 99% the Unite Facebook group that has has boomed. And this, this just shows just how silly those, uh, uh, the, the powers that be are. They, they, they think that by intimidating you and the others and setting an example that it's just gonna make you go away and interest in your message uh, 
disappear. It's the opposite effect. Mm-hmm. And they should know that by now. When when you look at past revolutions and past history, yeah, that that doesn't work. But they're desperate. They're absolutely desperate. Mm. So did you go to the Botanical Gardens uh, protest? Uh, the 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 following, four, uh, it was three. Uh, it was three weeks later. It was on the May the twenty eighth. I think it was off to, uh, top of my head. That was when uh, you're allowed. Uh, allowed to gather outside in groups of 10. There was no uh, police aggression there, but uh, they watched everyone uh, like hawks and barked social distancing instructions at them. Were you there that day? Yeah, well, there actually was aggression. I, I did go there and I did cover that event, but I ended up having a setting wrong on my microphone. And then when I've checked the footage when I've got home, because I got some really good interviews with people who had been had kids and stuff vaccine injured so i was very, very disappointed but the the audio quality was just gone but i've still got some of the video footage and the cops formed a wall and they just started you know yelling like madmen and just slowly using military tactics and moving forward while yelling at the people to maintain social distancing but they were literally boxing people in to a tighter area so then their cameras there could film people and if necessary, they could put it to the media to make it look like to the outside world. All these protesters are standing really clumped together and the police are doing the right thing. But I was even asking um, lots of people who were around me when the police were doing this, if they felt intimidated and threatened. And many people did because they were just an armed force and they had horses. And there was maybe 40, 50 of the cops there. I'm not sure exactly, but... For what reason, what grounds were they just charging forwards? And I didn't see it, but um, a mate of mine who was there, Andy, saw it. A cops pushed a woman out the way uh, aggressively. And like, just that alone is not on. That, because it doesn't need to be extreme violence where the cops are killing people. That's besides the point. They're meant to be keepers of the peace. They're the ones sparking... All the conflict, all the conflict. Yeah, yes. It was almost like that day they were trying to provoke somebody in the in the crowd to uh, confront them, and so they could uh, claim that it was an unruly crowd and they were right to shut it down. But nobody there took the took the bait, and mm -hmm. I think that the police they're also intimidated by activists such as yourselves because you know. Uh, uh, your rights. Uh, it's they. It's very easy to well, fine and uh, move on people who don't or well, know their rights or just accept what the police say, and uh, they, they they get uh, very tongue tongue twisted when people such as yourself uh, challenge them. I had always oh, one of the Sydney uh, anti lockdown activists, uh, Victor Tay, from exercising. Uh, your rights and his uh, encounters with the New South Wales police, they they came up with things like, you're not complying with the spirit of the law. I didn't know <laughs> that laws had spirits. Mm. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. But yeah, I mean, they literally have no idea. They, they don't understand the law at all because if they did, they wouldn't have, have joined. They wouldn't have joined. They'd be doing things like me and you. If, if they actually cared about people, that they'd be arresting each other, they'd be arresting the politicians, they'd be arresting all the Freemasons, they'd be doing something that's going to contribute to society, not cause fear and intimidation and take away people's freedom. And what's worse than that? Laws are meant to be objective, not subjective. And that's what this house arrest which it came from uh executive state of emergency powers which were passed by the uh, uh the the legislator of, of victoria many years back in response to uh, the the black saturday bushfires of 2009 but it's a it's a massive delegation of power from the the legislator to the uh, executive and where when uh the Victoria Police were were ordered to implement this uh, state of emergency, or as they say, the, the Chief Health Officer's directive. They were asked to use discretion, which is the ultimate subjective application 
of the law, depending on what police officer you get, they can uh, implement, they can say, no, I don't believe that you're out of the house for what I deem essential uh, reasons. The, they can decide uh, based on their own judgment if you're a lawbreaker or not, which was the most, I think, outrageous thing of the, the house arrest. Mm hmm now the the people who attended uh, these anti-lockdown uh, uh, protests uh, the mainstream media they were eager to uh, talk uh, uh, talk about how they were anti-vaxxers anti uh, 5g <clears throat> what did you find uh, was the, the the major issues for attendees yes there were people there who were concerned about those but what was uh, your overall impression Freedom from a tyrannical government, that, that was definitely the, the prime motive because all, all those other issues are just secondary issues. 5G, sure, it's dangerous. Vaccine, sure, they're dangerous. But the most dangerous thing out of them all is a, is a force that is issuing all those commands to all the subsectors in the medical industry and the police and the telecommunications industry. Who's controlling and dictating all that? Well, it's the government. Well, it's all the secret hands behind the government, but they're the illusory force that the public is aware of. Mm. So freedom. Now, obviously, it, we, we, we should remind everyone of the, the official reason for this uh, uh, economic and, and societal lockdown and house arrest, and that is uh, because of the, uh, the, 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 the dangerous uh, contagion and health effects from the coronavirus and we first learned that uh, uh, this coronavirus or the strand of it as is known uh, COVID-19 uh, began they either came from a wet market in Wuhan China or a bioweapons uh, testing facility in uh, Wuhan China but we became aware what it what it was uh, in January, it began to spread slowly internationally. What was your first impression of this coronavirus? My first impression was I believed it. I didn't know. I, I wasn't aware yet. Like in these past three months or so, it's been really good because I've learned a hell of a lot about what a virus is, why people actually get sick, like what are the reasons behind vaccination in the first place. Oh, like I've learned a lot and a lot because uh, we've got the comments box there. Can we just comment who actually knows what a virus is? Like, is a virus a living thing? I just want to see what people think. Is a virus living? Like, yes or no? Oh, I think there's a bit of a delay with that. Okay. Oh, uh, then. Well, well, <laughs> uh, right. well, we'll come back to uh, the responses, but... Okay. It yeah. was, I, I think the, the concern and then fear and hysteria around the coronavirus is because it was an unknown, it was a new virus. And <laughs> especially since it was born in a secretive communist regime where we weren't getting the whole truth. Mm -hmm. uh, even a lot of the health authorities didn't know what to believe. And there was footage coming out of uh, China of apparently people dying in the streets <clears throat> and they, they looked like they were suffering uh, a, a, quite a bit and so it was easy for people like people to have legitimate concerns uh, about it and when cases began to uh, 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 to arrive here in Australia and then uh, the uh, the curve as they as they call it really uh, shot up at the beginning of March. Uh, we saw well, the first wave of, of panic buying, starting with the, the, the toilet paper and paper towels and then moving on to, to, to staples. And, of course, the, the, the mainstream media, they're, they're dying as, uh, as a business. I mean, even during this uh, pandemic, they've shared lots of jobs. Uh, 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 a lot of their operations have, have shut down. But this was sort of their last hurrah. And of course, the mainstream media, what sells newspapers, what's get eyeballs, it's fear. And an unknown virus, what better way to scare people shitless? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they claim it's a new virus, but 
the fact is coronavirus has been around forever. It's just because when you look into the nature of a virus, what is a virus? If we didn't have viruses, we would die. A virus is merely an excre excretion from the cell. So it's a reaction to a buildup of toxicity in someone's body. A cold, for example, is just a bacterial detoxification. Bacteria come out in the body through the bloodstream and they eat up detoxifying, putrefying flesh from toxicity that you've consumed or you've produced internally. There's two ways we become toxic, internally through our thoughts and emotions, and then externally through the food that we eat, which might have herbicides, pesticides, uh, flavorings, colorings, artificial preservatives, blah, 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 the water, the air, the EMF radiation, then there's an abundance amount of ways to cause toxicity in your body from the environment. And it's different that there's, you know, you can willingly consume toxins like you can willingly smoke or drink alcohol or eat shitty food everyone knows that's going to be bad for you but it's all the hidden ones that people don't know about like in your toothpaste in your shampoo in the the body wash you're putting on your skin they literally put these poisons everywhere and a virus is secreted when there's too much toxicity that the bacteria and whatever else is in there can't clean it up so the cell creates and through an exosome it excretes a virus which is not alive there's no respiratory tract no digestive system no self-preservation mechanisms it's a soap it's a solvent like the closest thing i can uh, give you an example of is mucus when you have dirt and crap go up your nose to protect the you know delicate lining inside your nose mucus will form and it will push push out all the crap you've inhaled through your nose to protect your internal body. And a virus is very similar. It comes out and it will eat up toxicity, uh, you know, a big time and clear it out. But they, they completely relabeled that because it's a beautiful business model to trick people into, into Louis Pasteur's germ theory, because this is all started hundreds of years ago with, if anyone's interested with Antoine Bouchamp versus Louis Pasteur, Antoine Bouchamp had the cellular theory, the terrain theory, which is the way the body actually works. And then Louis Pasteur, who I believe was most likely a part of some of the, these cults, had germ theory. Everyone knows pasteurization of milk. That came from Louis Pasteur. Pasteurization of milk is a, that's getting off topic, but that's another bad thing. So what they did was they just relabeled this coronavirus they just brought it up they called it COVID-19 COVID-19 doesn't exist it's not a thing it's just a fake testing but coronavirus is real it's just a like a virus that's excreted from your body to protect you in response to toxicity hmm. and we were we were told that uh, this has the potential to 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 wipe out large swaths of the uh, the global population and uh, i bring it back to to our uh, premier uh, dan andrews he was uh, preparing to have the, the melbourne exhibition and convention center as a a makeshift morgue and of course that was relayed in the mainstream media that oh we're preparing uh for the worst and they they showed footage of those uh tent hospitals uh over in the uh the us uh, but uh, as uh, we've come to to realize now the the hospitals have been virtually empty throughout the entire pandemic i'm not sure if you've witnessed the what they're they're known as the the TikTok nurses in the the uk because the hospitals are empty because they've sent everyone home uh delayed cancer <coughs> treatments uh, they're making these choreographed uh TikTok videos and they're clearly not overworked from a a pandemic we've had 102 deaths uh or sorry 104 deaths uh in australia so far from the coronavirus 20 in victoria do you know how many uh, we've had in victoria uh deaths uh, from the flu this year none 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 because it's probably already labeled as covid19 even though last winter uh we had uh, nationwide 900 deaths from the flu it was the worst flu season on record and i 
uh, and my other media colleagues, we all got the, the flu and it was absolutely horrible. We knew we weren't going to die, but it mm. was, it, 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 we were bedridden for well, at least a, a, a couple of weeks and it was highly contagious because we don't know who patient zero is, but uh, we, we got it from each other, but we didn't shut down the entire uh, economy uh, people losing their jobs, businesses, shut down, lock everyone up of their homes because of this uh, killer flu season. And it's clear that we're going to have less, less deaths from all strands of influenza this year. And I think it's time for an assessment now is, was it all worth it? Because we need to get the suicide uh, statistics for this year compared to to last year, uh, the rates of uh, family violence and and mental health uh, treatment and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And if you look at even the CDC, Centre for Disease Control in America, their website, approximately worldwide every year, 646,000 people die every year from the flu. And like we look at, okay, what's the, the number on coronavirus? I don't know what it is at the moment, probably 400,000 or something, I'm assuming. Well, it's you 10 know? million cases worldwide and it's around about to hit 500,000 uh, deaths. And if you look at the last major global pandemic, that was the 68, 69 Hong Kong flu, which killed between one and 4 million people, but we didn't shut down the world in 68, 69. Mm hmm. Exactly. And another thing that I've learned in this whole COVID-19 hoax is a virus is not contagious. The flu is not contagious. The flu is a viral detoxification. It is it's not possible unless it's it's man made and it's injected into you because a virus is not a living thing. It doesn't reproduce the cells created internally. So when you've got the flu, you were just detoxifying and you've got to be glad that you're doing that because when you don't detoxify, which the big pharma industry doesn't want you to, they give you all these pills and potions to cover up symptoms of sickness. And then people are like, oh, I've got cancer now. I don't know how that happened. Well, it's because you kept on suppressing symptoms with whatever someone's sick with and they didn't allow the body to actually excrete all that poisonous, toxic buildup from eating shitty food, from Wi-Fi radiation, from just the general world that we live in today that they have created for us that breaks people's bodies down. Because when you look at the native indigenous populations around the world, like Eskimos, some African tribes in the mountains, in Nepal, even the Aborigines before we got here, when they just live off the land, they're not subjected to mass amounts of radiation from radar and wi-fi towers they don't get sick they don't get cancer like they don't die from diseases because disease isn't an isn't a natural thing it's a man-made thing the body is constantly trying to go back to homeostasis a state of balance so a flu is not contagious and they've literally done studies where they'll actually isolate the virus which the COVID-19 test doesn't do but where they'll at isolate viruses of someone who's got a flu or some kind of sickness pull it out in a, a syringe and then put it into someone else they're not going to get that same virus it's just a little bit of toxicity it, it's not well it's not even toxicity it clears up toxicity but it's not contagious it appears to be contagious like say with the flu there's a couple times a year that it appears to be contagious, but it's very similar to this analogy. Like when a, a rooster in the morning starts crowing or cock-a-doodling, whatever you call it, and then the next rooster does, and then the next, or dogs start barking, or someone starts yawning, or when women are grouped together and, you know, they, they sync up their period with the moon and their menstrual cycle starts to sync up. That's not really contagious, is it? It's got the appearance of being contagious, but it's not. That's, a, that's what happens with the flu and colds. They're, they're seasonal, seasonal detox, detoxification because not everyone keeps their body smick and smack, if that's a, the right expression to use. But no, not, not contagious, but don't just take my word for a cross-reference that look up doctors. If anyone wants links and stuff, I can provide you with mountains of evidence for that. 
and lots of reading, but no, it is not contagious. Nope. Before mm -hmm. we, yeah. Before we go on to well, the reported uh, second wave, we might go uh, through some audience questions on entropy. Uh, so I'm continuing to put the, the link into the live YouTube chat. So the first question comes from Binary Agenda. The situation in Melbourne has clearly reached a point where we can no longer contain it. And I'm not talking about the coronavirus. Can we build a wall already? And <laughs> I know that, uh, well, Binary Agenda is not uh, from uh, Victoria, but we are at the moment a a national laughingstock uh, pariah state, and I don't blame uh, the, the the people from the the rest of Australia, given uh, the the current state of things. I'm not sure how you see it. Yeah, we need to build a big wall in a circle, and then put all the government in there, <laughs> then and the media and any Freemasons, and then we'll have problem solved. Problem will be solved then. Uh, Bieber Anti-Bullying has asked uh, how much crossover is there between anti-lockdown protesters and uh, uh, Q uh, QAnon followers? You know about uh, that theory? Yeah, I don't know enough about QAnon. Uh, best bet, though, it's, it's probably a psyop, unfortunately. Uh, I know that I some know. of the, the, the anti-lockdown... Uh, activists uh, here in, in Melbourne, I've seen uh, Thanos and uh, Raphael talk about uh, uh, their, uh, their belief that there's uh, pedophile rings, historical and current, uh, within uh, government and, and business. What's your mm -hmm. view on that? Oh, for sure there would be. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not something you've looked into? Not enough, but I've looked into enough pieces of the world and of everything that go that goes on, and that's their modus operandi. That's how they operate. When you look into Pizzagate and how these cults work, they're obsessed with children. They're, they're obsessed with blood. They're obsessed with anything that's inverted and that's satanic. And it's it's very clear to see, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself, when not just uh, with uh, Quanon and the uh, alleged pedophile rings and and five G and 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 vaccines, it's not. I don't. I, I'm I, I'm uh, skeptical of uh, anti vaxxers anti five G, those who believe in pedophile rings. But the the worst thing you can do is, and this is what all the social media sites are doing, is just shut down people talking about that because that just fuels even more suspicion. And I've seen Thanos mm. communicate this in uh, his videos. If like, why are you so concerned about us talking talking about this? And this is why I do the unshackled because free speech and free thought is is absolute. You can't stop you, you, you can't stop people believing what uh, what they believe. I mean, what's next? Mm -hmm. Like, are you going to uh, censor people for uh, believing that the the Earth is flat? Like, I, is that considered a, a too dangerous? an idea and this is how the authorities are stupid by thinking that shutting down these discussions or debates that that's the end of it no you're just fueling more suspicion but you know why they shut down those debates and don't let people talk about it right or well, because they they don't want people digging d digging into them like uh, uh, about some of their secrets which it might not be the, the things that I, I mentioned, uh, but uh, there can be elements of truth to theories such as uh, QAnon and uh, to the, uh, the vaccinations. Mm. Anything that they try to shut down and ridicule, it's because they've got nothing else. They know it's the truth and they can't have a debate about it because they will lose about any of those things about vaccinations, about 5G, about flat earth, about the government, anything. Like, just look at their modus operandi. If they ridicule and 
censor and spread disinformation and misinformation about any topic, it's most likely true. But obviously, do your due diligence and cross-reference everything and make sure you critically think because there are lots of consciousness traps everywhere for people and that that's their aim. Yeah, but, do uh, your own yeah. research. Exactly. Mm -hmm. don't, don't believe at uh, face value what the mainstream media tells you uh, d uh, uh, don't believe uh, what the the uh, the anti-vaccination and anti-5g activists say at face value either do your own research mm -hmm. yep cross-reference everything feel very comfortable in knowing what you believe like it's better to have a neutral stance on something uh let's say with 5g say for instance you're like i don't know and instead or a lot of people will just say oh no it it is good there's no harm in it and then you'll ask them okay how many hours worth of research have you put into that and they'll say none so how could you possibly believe then that there is no danger to it when you're speaking to someone who has put in dozens of hours of research into investigating the lethality of it and these people are saying it it is lethal and someone who hasn't put any not even one minute it's like okay a smarter move would probably be to at least move into the middle point and say i'm neutral about it i don't know because i haven't looked at either side then do your research I, i've got a quote it's a mark of an intelligent man to change or woman to change their opinion when contradicted with facts well when it presented with facts and evidence that contradicts their current paradigm or belief system about reality like don't get married to a belief just because it's always that's been what you've always known like it's okay to be wrong on this journey i've been wrong so many times and sucked into so many consciousness traps i look back at now and I'm like whoa that was a whole load of bullshit but you, you learn along the way, you learn along the way, and you've got to spend time, really. And you've got to figure out what's the most important thing to you because there's a lot of these subjects people always disagree with. That's fine. But I'm sure the, the one thing we can all agree with is that freedom. We all just want to have the freedom, freedom to choose whether you want a vaccination, to choose whether a 5G tower goes up to near your house, to choose whether you want to go out and risk, even if there was a dangerous virus going around. You just want the freedom of choice. That's the most important thing. And I'm sure we can all agree on that. Like, hopefully, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Anxious Aussie has asked, will you to teach your children there is no such thing as a sexually transmitted disease? I think uh, they're, they're, try uh, they're trying to uh, ridicule your, pre uh, your, your, your previous statement about a virus not uh, being... Uh, transmittable mm -hmm. uh, uh, most of them definitely not HIV no that's a scam that's that's a definite scam and uh, I mean this stuff requires hours and hours of research because it sounds like when you've been so indoctrinated with a certain set of information from the mainstream for so long and you hear someone talk contrary to it of course it sounds ridiculous of course it does that's normal extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence like HIV being some disease that leads to, leads to AIDS, well, that's an extraordinary claim in itself. Like, have you done the research and actually looked into well, that? Well, that's just one mm. sexually transmitted mm. disease. Obviously, there's things such as uh, syphilis and, and gonorrhea and herpes, hepatitis. I don't, know, I don't know all about them, but I'd recommend... If, if you're really interested about that stuff, don't talk to me about it. Go go listen to the doctors. Go listen to Adjunus von der Planets and Dr. Thomas Cohen and Rashid Buttar and Andrew Kaufman. There's there's heaps of doctors out there. Go do some reading. Um, I'm just I'm just the man that's done a bit of study into it, and you know I'm going to make my own choices with sexuality, whatever. I'm confident in that. You go do whatever you want to do. You know, come up with your own answers with that. Hmm. We won't uh, go too down the, the rabbit hole or open any more uh, <laughs> can of worms. Uh, but uh, Rabbit I, holes everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's clear the, the audience know where, where you stand on such medical matters and they should be familiar where, uh, where I stand 
as well, given that, well, I said, I, 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 I have said that it's likely that I caught the flu from uh, one of my associates last year and maybe gave it to, to other people than that. So people know my views on transmission of viruses there there's a lot of gaslighters in the in the in the live chat tonight uh, but we'll we'll move on to the the second wave now uh, so we had the 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 harshest uh, lockdown uh, restrictions you weren't even allowed to uh, play golf or go fishing even on your own we were the slowest to reopen cafes restaurants and and pubs and as I mentioned before, Dan Andrews spoke to us like we were children, but uh, we are home to the, the, the second wave with uh, 75 uh, new uh, coronavirus infections uh, confirmed today, up from 49 yesterday, uh, and it was 41 on Saturday, 30 on Friday, and 33 on Thursday. And I'll bring up the, the, the interactive map here. Hmm. Oh. There we go there. Uh, so it's it's still heavily concentrated in the, the northwest. So the the city of Hume, which takes in uh broad meadows and and sunbury uh that now has 51 active cases bring bank right next door has 31 the city of casey in the southeast is stable at 15 but it's getting much worse in the municipalities next to hume and bring bank mooney valley 24 moorland 26 so it's clearly confined to those areas and uh, government and media have basically admitted that the outbreaks are in these uh, migrant uh, multicultural areas where uh, English is uh, a second language. So they're clearly uh, not, not going to be uh, listening to, to, to Daniel Andrews's uh, threats and, and scorn as, as much as... As, as much as other people. And uh, this, of course, uh, 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 is after uh, Daniel Andrews shrugged uh, his shoulders that he couldn't stop the, the Black Lives Matter rallies uh, that occurred. And you and uh, other uh, uh, anti-lockdown activists who attended those uh, rallies uh, were visited uh, by the the police, uh, but uh, I wonder if that's happened to the the Black Lives Matter uh, activists. Can you just talk us through when the police arrived at your door? They all seem to come at nine thirty at night. That's the same what happened to to Raphael. They they that seems to be their favourite time of the evening. Hmm, that's weird. Mm. I don't know what the connection is with that, but yeah, maybe they just like disturbing people at night when they're busy. But um. Yeah, so they, they rocked up on my door, uh, and w when they first got there, they were asking if I was, you know, my name. Mm. And I said, oh, I don't feel obliged to answer that. And they said, well, what, what, what's your name? What do you go by? I'm like, well, I go, I go by James. That's it, you know, because you don't have to identify yourself to the police unless you've actually committed a crime or you're under arrest or you've been arrested. And I had done neither of those. So, yeah, they started speaking for a little bit and then I went and grabbed my phone and came back and started filming them. And, yeah, there was two cops there. Well, one seemed like there was some humanity left in him and he was just, you know, just doing what he's told and was being bullied by the others to read off a script, just nonsense. And then the other cop there, you could just tell, was soulless, unfortunately. And that they just kept on ranting and i was asking why are you actually here what are you doing trespassing on my land like, what's going on and you know they didn't really have any answers and i asked them why did you become police officers like what's the reason you joined the police off the, the police force was it to do this like surely not surely you'd be interested in doing better things like actually going after real criminals but you know a lot of the time they they can't think for themselves which is very disappointing 
it's mm. easy to to pick on uh, largely compliant uh, people uh, who've been uh, out of the house for, for unapproved reason. It's it's a, it's a bit tougher to maybe crack down on on youth gangs who have, uh, well, since the the lockdown was lifted, have been uh, running rampant uh, again, especially in uh, those uh, uh, coronavirus hotspots in the uh, the the northwest, but. We've heard now, uh, de straight from Daniel Andrews's mouth, the uh, that this lockdown was completely perverse uh, because he mentioned that people who tested positive to coronavirus were ignoring uh, directions to self-isolate and were going to events. Well, hang on, they've arrested people such as yourself, Fanos, who haven't got the virus, yet the people who are actually infectious they haven't bothered to to make sure uh, that they are self-isolating and they uh, they've locked all the healthy people up such as yourself uh banned people from going to the the gym to to keep fit mm -hmm. and a and and a healthy immune uh, system uh, you're a regular uh gym junkie and caused a whole lot of destruction uh, uh, of uh, businesses and, and jobs, which, uh, as I mentioned, uh, physical uh, and mental health, uh, 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 the people affected by that, uh, their health will uh, deteriorate as well. And it seems to have been, well, it has been for nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they wanted to lock everyone down to make them more sick. But, like, I'm seriously surprised the numbers are still so low. Like, only 104 deaths because humans need to go out in the sunlight to start a chain reaction which creates vitamin D in their system. They need fresh air. They need to be socializing with other people for their mental well being. And they push a fear mongering attitude through the mainstream media as a weapon. And when people are in a state of fear, it causes stress and it sparks a cascade of hormones that go through the cell membrane into the cell and then the DNA prints out certain proteins and doesn't print out other proteins. And there's adrenaline and cortisol, which causes people to be more and more sick. But like, it, it's still very surprisingly low only at only 104, even with all this lockdown business and telling people to put on masks and they're breathing and breathing in which poison. And, how, uh, uh, how uh, health officers have basically uh, conceded to us masks don't work. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they have never advised uh, people to, to wear masks. And all the masks communicate when I see people out in public wearing masks or, or gloves is that it's a it's either a virtue signal like look at me i'm taking the virus seriously <laughs> or yeah. you're just a complete hypochondriac worry what and they're, they're the type of people if you uh, come within an inch too close to them they'll berate you they're the people i do mm. want to keep a social distance from because they're clearly mm people who uh, are, are just uh, believing the, 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 the hype. And now let's just have a look at, because uh, I've got another infographic up. Remember we were told that we needed to be all be locked down so our hospitals weren't going to be overwhelmed uh, mm -hmm. and our ICUs. This is the, uh, the, the Australian Government Department of Health uh, today. One in intensive care, 11 in hospital nationwide. That's <laughs> what we're concerned about this second wave. So yes, more people are getting the coronavirus, uh, but uh, the, the ICU wards and the, the hospitals, nobody's being admitted to that. So why, why are we worried if nobody's going to hospital, not even close to dying? Mm. Yeah. Just want to back up with the masks. It's like, well, why why do people wear masks and gloves? And it's because they're in a state of fear. They're, they're afraid and they think they're doing the right thing. They're misinformed. Like they think it actually is going to help them. So in, in that way, like, I don't know. I don't get angry at them. I just feel sorry for them, you know, because they're misinformed and they think they're doing something that's going to protect their health and maybe even their children or their, their family. But as a matter of fact, it's not going to help them. But um, yeah, with that, 
yeah, you can look uh, on that Australian website. And it was uh, a month or two ago on, I think it was Channel 9 or Channel 7 News, I did a video about it. They predicted that there was going to be 1.6 or 7 million cases of coronavirus Australia-wide by the 10th of May. And by the 10th of May, well, even now, there was only, what, 7,000 cases or something, which is wrong by 99.6% when, when I did the calculations uh, a few weeks ago. It's like, that is a huge mistake to make. Like 99, over 99%. Why do people still listen to these experts and leaders, leaders, who were wrong about a statistic by 99 percent yeah bamboozling exactly and just going back to the the infographic here uh total cases in australia of coronavirus 7686 that's barely barely any and if you look at the hmm. positive testing rate nationwide 0.3 percent in victoria it's been 0.3 percent who've tested positive who've got that uh, uh nasal swab mm. and that that's why they caused huge amounts of fear mongering with you know saying the exhibition center i ha hadn't heard that before but they were going to use that as a morgue and all these other big hospital setups and they said the numbers were going to be really high because they know how the body works they're aware of that they're they're they know practically everything and they know when people go into a state of fear they get sick that's one of the biggest lead leading killers of people getting sick is because of fear because when they're in that state of fear then their body can't produce other antioxidants and other positive proteins and nutrients in their body to keep them healthy so they cause a huge spike in fear they you know get people going crazy about the toilet paper and buying heaps of food and then the people who are not aware of what's going on behind the scenes, they think it's real. They actually believe what the media and the government is telling them. And then they get afraid because imagine for a second, Tim, if you actually believed in this and, and thought it was real and that there was going to be millions of people dying and it was going to be a huge pandemic, you would be afraid. Like I could put myself in their shoes and see yeah for sure you would be pretty afraid of like dying from this random invisible disease that you know just just kills at will so that's what they did as a tactic to try and get more people sick because they want the numbers to go up higher and higher because they know when the numbers are this low it, it's destroying their reputation and it makes it harder for even the unaware people to believe in it that's why they started all this mass sending the army out and these teams to go out to people's houses because they're like we got to get these numbers up somehow because they're not going up by themselves they've got all these signs around telling people to go get tested but and they're not doing it it was donald trump who he said it bluntly if you test more people you're going to find more cases and there is probably people who've got the coronavirus or had the coronavirus and didn't know that they had it and probably passed it on to, to people who didn't feel asymptomatic as well, which either proves that uh, it wasn't as deadly as uh, we were told it was, or we've already reached herd immunity. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's still going under the assumption of a virus being contagious. You can believe whatever you want to believe, but like for me personally, I, I know it's not, and they they also know it's not, but you know people can believe whatever they want to believe that's fine yeah. but it's clear that this time around with the the, the second wave uh, that uh, people aren't getting sucked in like they did last time especially since well first of all 104 deaths you can't really say uh, to people with the second wave that you're going to need the convention center again for a morgue when you didn't need it the first time and the fact that daniel andrews's credibility is now in the in the toilet because everyone saw with the black lives matter uh protest the 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 double standard uh where 
None of them uh, were fined, yet they came down on uh, people such as you like a ton of bricks and uh, made all sorts of threats uh, to people if they left the home, uh, they'd be fined. And people saw those Black Lives Matter rallies saying, hang on, if you're turning a blind eye to this, why should I obey the uh, social distancing, the, uh, the, the uh, limits on visitors to houses and that? Why should I pay attention to that? And also the, the 60 Minutes uh, expose on one of Daniel Andrews' most senior ministers, Adam Somnia, using taxpayer staffers to branch stack. Uh, he puts himself up as the, the moral authority, Daniel Andrews, and people saw that and it's like, why should we follow the rules when your government isn't following, following them yourself? And you notice that Daniel Andrews, he knows that he can't threaten a second lockdown. He can't lecture and hector people again. He knows he is, uh, he, his authority, credibility is, is, is shot and they really don't know what they're doing now. Oh, they'll continue it. They're, they're very clever and they're playing this out for a long time. Uh, I, I'm assuming, I can't say I know for sure, but just a theory, they'll probably say that the virus is going to mutate or something like that because that's a, a believability factor behind that. Um, and they'll probably want to link it somehow in the timing with 5G when they turn that on, on as well because 5G doesn't cause coronavirus. It, it just it causes people to get sick because it, it emits radiation thousands of times higher than a microwave. And that is not good for the human body and people get sick. So when they, when they do that, then they'll say, oh, it's come back and there's a spike, but the virus has mutated. That's why it's so much more infectious now. It's even deadlier, more lockdowns, and you can only guess what's going to happen from there. Well, in my opinion, you can only uh, get people compliant for a lockdown once and you can only wreck an economy and well we're going to see more jobs and businesses destroyed uh, with the the time lag you can only do that once and i think that's why uh, daniel andrew is only talking about regional lockdowns now because he knows he can't lock down the state again especially now since all the businesses they've only just been reopened for a an, a, a few weeks why can't they lock it down again? Well, as I just said, because they've lost their... Uh, 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 they can't sell the fear again, and they've lost their authority to make people compliant. They can try and do it, but they're not going to get people compliant again. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. But that's when they bring in martial law and all that. Uh, th these are just assumptions at the moment I'm making. But if they want to do another lockdown which i'm assuming they will i don't know when it will be and i may be wrong with that let's hope so but they can easily enforce that because there's a chain of command when the the powers behind the government and the politicians tell them what to do then they tell the media they tell the public and then they're going to tell the high up police commissioners they'll tell the generals in the army who most of them are part of the cult and it just filters down and like I've been in the army personally my, myself, you know, at, at, at the bottom rung and people at the bottom rung just do what they're told from higher up. And when higher up tells you what to do, they'll go down. And when it's covered with the illusion of this is for your safety, people will do it. Let's, let's hope they don't. Let's hope they have enough common sense and they've done enough research to realize it's all a hoax. But I don't think we're at that point yet. It's going to take a lot more of them pushing the population's buttons for more people to wake up. That's a good thing. The harder they push, the more people are going to wake up. And I think more than likely there will be another lockdown and there'll be some kind of martial law, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they've already got, what, a thousand ADF soldiers to help with the testing and stuff. Well, like, they, they they, they, uh, Daniel Andrews yeah. withdrew the request at the last minute last Thursday. They were on their way to the, the Victorian border and they were pulled back, which he clearly got cold feet about uh, what it would mean to have boots on the ground domestically, which is then I go to the point now that they just don't know what to do now, the Andrews government. Oh, hundred no, they definitely know what to do. They've planned this. It's not like they're just jumping into it and they've got no planning. They, they would have planned this for 
a long time ago well, that have Gallic, most of it. Have, my out. my uh, opinion is is that uh, governments mm -hmm. are, are, are more stupid and incompetent than conspiring. I mean, let's have a look at the COVID safe app. Six million downloads. It was supposedly mm -hmm. going to trace coronavirus cases. Hasn't traced a single case. It's been a massive big brother bungle. But there's a big difference between between what they say it's going to do and what they mean it to actually do because they say a lot of things they don't follow through with and they don't say a lot of other things that they do follow through with probably probably according to them it has been a huge huge success well they said that but for a while on, but they've mm -hmm. it's strangely they're not telling us to uh, download the app anymore hmm they used to do it every press conference but not now okay yeah They'll, they'll probably bring it back up. They, they cycle through things because otherwise people, you know, they get deaf to hearing the same thing too many times. You know, they, it's got to be repeated. But if it's just constant, then people get deaf to that message. They'll talk about other things. That's why there was a the whole big Black Lives Matter because that was all orchestrated in America to, you know, cause more chaos and division between the world because when people are fighting against each other, they're not focusing on who the real enemy is. Mm. Yes, we've gone from uh, the coronavirus pandemic to Black Lives Matter and everything's racist back to the uh, the second wave. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, and that that's the media narrative as well, uh, at, uh, at, uh, not just the, the political narrative. But the, the lockdowns, the, the fines, did you receive a fine? No, no, I haven't got one. Mm. But I'm assuming I still will. But because yeah. we still don't know whether the issuance of these fines it's been legal at all because the courts are clogged at the moment because they've been shut down these could be all these fines could be struck out of court if if anyone's paid these these fines i would say that you're uh, a sucker they could all be thrown hmm. out in courts and the government mm -hmm. just well they're even more humiliated mm -hmm. yeah well a any of their fines uh, are totally illegal because when, when you question their authority, who is Fines Victoria? Where do they get their authority from? They're not a legitimate government body. They are a corporation with a registered ABN number. They, <laughs> like, look, look at the, the patch on the police officer's shoulder. Literally has a satanic pentagram. It's got the Lex Foray, the Roman wreath indicating Roman control. It's got the St. Andrew's crown at the top. It, it's all... It's all fake. It's all fake. And obviously each of these little things I'm talking about, you could go and explore for a year on, year on each of them. But they're, they're all illegal because it, it, it was a, a legislation breach. Legislation is not the law. It requires consent because you have common law and then you've got legislation, statutes, acts, directives, rules. They all require consent. And most of the time they trick people into that consent. But common law is the real law, which is the right and just law. You know, don't do to others that you wouldn't want done to yourself, to summarize. Well, mm. on that question, I've always been of the, the opinion that uh, government authority only exists uh, mm. as long as the people uh, give it their consent. That's, that's the bottom line in all of this. Uh, uh, but obviously we've got different <laughs> interpretations of that. We've got different uh, predictions about uh, where the, uh, the pandemic and this uh, uh, renewed outbreak uh, will go. Uh, but I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, our discussion uh, tonight and people can find you on YouTube and Facebook. Yep, and I'd agree with you that, with that, with what you said about the government. The government's only got authority when the people believe in it. That's true. That's a true statement. Because if the people don't believe in it, then there's not. There is no authority. But yes, you can find me on the Conscious Truth Network, talking about all these controversial topics, talking about consciousness and life and the world and freedom and all that kind of good stuff. If you're interested about anything else, yeah, send me a message. Jump and into the group. Hmm. I've linked uh, to your channels in the description and on the oh, show notes awesome. page. Uh, we Thanks. are out of time now. We did uh, start late, uh, so we are 
uh, finishing late, uh, but uh, I'd like to catch up again with you uh, further on uh, during the year to assess where we're, where we're at uh, at uh, the what will be our, our future destination. Predicting the the future or what's going to happen in six months is is proven to be quite futile. Mm -hmm. We'll say, yeah, awesome. Glad to be on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Tim. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.